Hello there and welcome friends! As promised in my general demon guide video, this is going to be the first out of all of the four demon builds I have prepared for you. A demon demon slayer who is also a shapeshifter so focused on changing into all of the very fun demon forms and destroying the enemies as a true demon. As a shapeshifter you can gain very high physical scores because of the bonus you get from all of your forms which can then be increased further through the master shapeshifter mythic ability. Depending on the form you also get quite a lot of different special abilities and also different weapon attacks. Your stats overall will be very good, both armor class, attack bonus and also saving throws eventually. And as a demon slayer you'll gain not only spellcasting with some very powerful self buffs, a massive amount of both attack bonus and damage rolls against demons, the strongest and most common enemies in the game, and even a trusty pet to aid you, so overall it's a very stacked and very solid class and build choice. So let us get started first with our build progression. And for our shapeshifter demon build I have chosen ranger and demon slayer as our main class. And the reason is you know simple, we only really get the demon shapeshifter forms at around mythic rank 4, so level 11 to 12. And I do like my builds being viable through the whole game especially the early game. Demon Slayer helps a lot with that because we do get full favorite enemy progression into demons, all sorts of demons. We already start with a plus 2 bonus to attack bonus and damage rolls against all of the demons that you face in the game, no matter if they are demons of magic, strength or slaughter, which can increase up to plus 10 at the end game, which is, well, extremely high. Ranger is also overall a very strong class because you do have some very great self buffing spells such as lead blades, sense vitals and later on you also have the instant enemy spell so that you gain your full favorite enemy bonus against non demonic enemies, everything else you meet. You do have quite a lot of free extra feats that you can choose in whatever style you want from archery to two handed weapons, even weapon and shield. Last but not least we also have of course our very powerful pet, which can carry you just by itself, especially in the early game. If you've watched my videos then you know how utterly amazing pets can be in Wrath of the Righteous. Anyways, with a Demon Slayer, we get a character that's very versatile, capable of fighting in melee in the early game and later changing into the very powerful demonic forms and becoming a true demon shapeshifter. Now an interesting note is that because of our favorite enemy applies to all demons no matter what weapon we are using, this does help you a lot when it comes to shapeshifting because the forms all have different weapons, some forms have claw and gore attacks, other forms have actual weapons like long swords such as the Baylor and Merylith. This way we don't have to waste feats in all sorts of different weapons like claw, bite, gore and so on. We already get a very powerful boost no matter what weapon we are using. For race I do enjoy going with human as always, but because rangers do have a lot of extra feats, you are free to choose something else. For background, well, you can go with either noble and then leader, and also street urchin and pickpocket. Pickpocket will give you the ever so useful plus 2 bonus to initiative, but the good thing about leader is that it does give you a plus 1 bonus on attack with long swords, and long swords do matter because the most powerful demon shapeshifter forms in the game, the Baylor and the Merylith, they do use long swords no matter what weapon you had before. So this can be a way to further increase them, but because they're also only you know, late game forms, you might just ignore this and go with Street Urchin and Pickpocket for the bonus tree initiative. This is the one I'm going to pick, as I prefer a bonus that is worthwhile through the entire game besides something that only really matters in the late game, unless you are planning on starting with long swords, which I don't recommend. I would rather go with rich weapons as I'm about to show you. For attributes, well, it's important to note that, unlike Dungeons & Dragons 3rd edition, whenever you change into a form, no matter what other form, by using a polymorph ability or something like Wild Shape, your physical stats are not replaced, you instead gain a boost based on whatever stats you already have. So, we, unlike 3rd edition, we can't just skip our physical stats. We do need to have them high, because we'll only get a bonus stacked on top of them. So, 19 strength, 14 constitution, 12 dexterity, and just a little bit of wisdom so we can actually cast our spells and don't have to rely on headbands as there are very powerful helmet slots for a shapeshifter character. You can of course dump both intelligence and charisma and get let's say higher dexterity or constitution but I don't find it needed and I like my characters to have you know positive scores on everything. For skills the choices are up to you, rangers have most of the skills in the game, I would certainly go with perception, 
Well, you can go with stealth and trickery. We will get a lot of dexterity because of our demon forms. Athletics is always great. And lastly, I'll pick Lord Nature just for the flavor with Ranger. But you can also go with, let's say, Persuasion if you want, or use Magic Device to use Scrolls. As far as feats, well, this build at the start is going to be a two-handed character that, that fights with Reach. The reason is, as usual, for higher damage, safety because of the Reach weapon, and also more attacks per round because of Cleave. I would recommend you go with Power Attack, and then Combat Reflexes to get started on our Attack of Opportunity line of feats. Now the reason I don't be Cleave now, as opposed to most of my two-handed builds, is because as a ranger we can gain Cleave for free at level 2. And honestly, level 1 you basically just fight the bugs in the cavern in the start area of the game, they aren't really tough. Level 2 is when the first dungeon really starts, and for that you already have Cleave for an extra attack per round, 2 attacks just at level 1, which makes for a very neat and smooth early gameplay experience. So for level 2, as I said before, we gain our first ranger combat style feat. And we are going with two-handed weapon, and then cleave for an extra attack. For level 3, go with cleaving finish. This way we can actually gain up to 3 whole attacks just at the early game. You attack an enemy, and if there's a nearby enemy, you will hit this enemy with cleave. And if you kill one of these enemies, you'll get a free attack because of cleaving finish. Very fun. And this will actually work later on, even when you are under the demon forms. For your favorite terrain, I would go with urban because, well, in the early game you are basically in the city of Canabris. And the most difficult part of chapter 2 is also in a city. For level 4, increase your, increase your strength, and this is also what you increase on all of the other levels. At last we also get our animal companion, which of course is going to be a dog. I won't really cover the dog progression in this guide, but remember, I already have... A full pet guide that explains everything you need to know about pets, how to equip them, how to wear them, even how to buff them. So please be sure to check that, link to the site here and down below in the video description. We won't be able to ride our dog in the early levels unless you cast reduce person on yourself. And unfortunately we cannot ride pets while polymorphed with different forms. So for level 5 you should definitely pick Boom Companion, because as a ranger our pet scales at our level minus 4. With Boom Companion we can make it scale fully to our level at level 6 and we are going to pick Great Cleave, only so we can later on pick Improved Cleaving Finish for even more free attacks per round. For level 7, this is when I strongly recommend you pick Outflank, as usual to empower our attacks of opportunity. For another favorite terrain at level 8, I recommend you go with Underground. A lot of the dungeons in the game are underground areas and this can help you a lot. For level 9, be sure to go with Seize the Moment to complete our Attack of Opportunity feat line, and this is also the level I gained this feat with my other characters. Now the reason I'm not picking Proved Critical early on is because, as I said before, uh, we are soon getting the demon forms, and they have all sorts of different weapons, it can be really hard to specialize in just one of them, until we get the Baylor and Merrilip later on, which only wield long swords. So for now, we'll be skipping Proved Critical. For another combat style feat at level 10, uh, the ones here don't really matter that much, I would go with either Iron Wheel for higher wheel saving throws, as we do have low wheel as a ranger, or toughness for more hit points. I'll go with Iron Wheel for now, because we really don't want our very high damage dealer demon character getting hit with confusion. For level 11, well you know, if you don't care for the early demon forms and you are just planning on using the Baylor and the Merrily form, which are by far the strongest of them all, then you can actually go with Improved Critical and then a weapon of choice. In the early game I recommend you go with Glaives, because there's a lot of powerful Glaives that you find, but you can also go with Improved Critical at this point and pick something like Falchion, because of the very high critical range. Or even just get Long Sword in preparation for Baylor and Merrily forms. But be advised, you do get them very late in the game at Chapter 5. So to keep this build more versatile, at this level, so level 11, I would pick Shake It Off, just to increase our saving throws even further. Level 13 is when I would pick Improved Cleaving Finish. And also Favorite Terrain Abyss, because at this point we'll soon be reaching Chapter 4, which takes place there. At level 14 we get another combat style feat, but the ones we have left don't really matter that much. I'll pick Toughness just for more hit points. By level 15 I would pick Improved Initiative. I do like going first, and at this point in the game enemies start having way higher initiative. But like I said before, you can also go with Improved Critical Longsword earlier, or also way earlier than this if you prefer. Level 17 is when I would truly pick Improved Critical, and then Longsword at last, because at this point, we actually gain the very powerful Baylor and Merrilith forms, and they both come equipped with Longswords. For another favorite terrain in level 18, it doesn't really matter, 
I guess I would go with something like forest, but at this point in the game, we aren't really going to be anywhere outside of urban and the abyss. As for our last two-handed combat feat, I would pick dodge just for more armor class, but it doesn't matter that much. As for level 19, the choices here don't really matter that much. I would just go with accomplished sneak attacker because at this point, we can already get the Baphomet book, as usual, that gives you an extra 1d6 points of sneak dice, even if your character doesn't have any sneak attack. But you can also go with Weapon of Focus, and then Long Sword, to increase your attack bonus in Baylor and Merrilith form even further. Alright, now let's talk about our Shapeshifter Demon, Demon Slayer, Mythic Progression. You certainly want close to the Abyss for the Gore attack, as we are a melee character. So we will be in range for this attack. For your first mythic ability, I recommend you go with Ever Ready as usual, as this does scale quite wonderfully with each one of your mythic ranks for very powerful attacks of opportunity. For mythic level 2, I would go with mythic power attack. This is one of our main ways of increasing the damage of our forms, as it does work no matter what form you have. For mythic level 3, I would pick Last Stand. Last Stand is by far one of the best mythic abilities in the game, when it comes to survivability, and as a main character, it is a game over if we die, and we really don't want that. This ability isn't just great or unfair, it's amazing even on the lower difficulties, because of how great avoiding death can be. And while as a human with a rich weapon, we do have high range, in most of the demon forms we don't have as big of a range, because our weapons won't be rich, each form has their own weapons, so last stand can help a lot when it comes to surviving and tanking with our demon character if needed. Now Mythic Rank 4 is when you finally get our demon shape-shifting spells, so it's why I recommend you instead of picking a Mythic feat, you go with extra Mythic ability, and then Master Shapeshifter, to increase the bonuses we gain from our forms by a massive plus 4, to our strength, dexterity and constitution. This is one of the best abilities for any shapeshifter character, and we do get it just in time. For our first demonic aspect, this can be different depending on your character's party. If you have a Scald party member that can provide your demon shapeshifter with pounds, and I do recommend you get a Scald, Scalds are basically amazing, I already have a guide explaining why they are so powerful, they are basically the ultimate party support for melee characters. Then you want the aspect of Kalavakus as usual, because whenever you charge you gain a free attack, and with pounds you gain a free attack equal to the number of your attacks per round, so you basically destroy everything. Even if you don't have a Scald to give you pounds, you can still just charge by yourself, you know, especially when you do it out of battle, as I have already shown to you in my charge guide, link to the site here and down below. By charging out of battle, you still retain all of your normal attacks per round after battle starts, so overall I do think Kalavakus is great even for this character, because honestly, who doesn't want free attacks, especially when we deal such high damage with every one of our attacks. For Mythic level 5, this is when I would pick Archmage Armor. As a demon shapeshifter, our armor class won't be that great when you first get our demon forms. It does become a lot better as we get higher forms, so with mythic rank 6, 7, 8 and so on. Archmage armor is going to help alleviate that issue. And even if we fall to low hit points, we can still rely on last 10 to keep us alive. For another demonic aspect, I would go with succubus because immunity to compulsion effects and is very powerful. Besides that, it also gives your party members a boost to their attack rolls, and reduces the attack rolls of your enemies. So another way of increasing your armor class. But if you don't care for the immunity to compulsion, you can go with Incubus instead because of the very big boost to damage plus 4. For our first major demonic aspect, go with Baylor to share your normal rage with your party members, and then Vavakia for the bonus to strength, so we get both strength and constitution, from the Baylor and Vavakia aspects, and as I said before, these are permanent boosts. Only the secondary effect requires you to be raging and have them turned on or off. For Mythic level 6, I would go with Improved Initiative Mythic. Acting before the enemy isn't just to hit them, before they can react, it also catches them flat-footed so they have a lot less armor class. For another demonic aspect, Incubus for the bonus to damage rolls. For Mythic level 7, go with Mythical Beast to further empower our dog pet. But you can also go with this earlier, such as instead of Archmage Armor, if you want to have a stronger dog, and don't care much for your own armor class. For another major demonic aspect, I would go with Shadow Demon, and then Sheer for the bonus to melee attack rolls. Now at Mythic rank 8, because we already have the Baylor and Merrilith forms by now, this is when I would pick Mythic Improved Critical and then Longsword. 
and go with Nabasu here, but it doesn't really matter. We are going to be, at this point in the game, always raging with Kalavaku, Succubus and Incubus. Or you can trade Succubus for Sheer. By Mythic level 9, we really already have the best of the Mythic abilities, so for now I would just go with Mythic Charge to further empower our charge damage. We are, after all, just going to destroy everything with one charge attack anyways. Pick anything here, I would go with Babao. As far as Mythic level 10, go with Mythic Sneak Attacker. As usual, we already have the Baphomet Sneak Attack book by now. But you can ignore this and go with, let's say, Flawless Attacks instead as well. As for your Demon Lord aspects, Nocticula as usual to share all the Rage Powers. And lastly, Pazuzu for an additional attack that stacks with haste. Perfect for all melee and ranged characters, really. Now let's explain what actually happens when your character changes into demon form, so what can you do and, and what you are blocked from doing. First, it's important to note that bonuses from gear actually will transfer to your form, besides bonuses from your armor and also weapon that you have equipped, as the weapon will be replaced with the weapons of your form. All of the other bonuses from the gear will transfer though, like for example, my Shy Lady Helmet gives plus 4 profane bonus to strength, and here we are, Shy Lady Helmet, even when under Baylor form. Second, you can actually cast spells and use most abilities while in Wild Shape or Polymorph spells like the Demon forms. It won't block your spell casting at all. This is only different when it comes to the animal forms because they can't really cast spells, they are just animals. But you can overcome that with the natural spell feat. For forms like dragons and all of the demon forms, you can still cast your spells just fine. Be them buffing spells or damage spells even. Which can make it fun, you know, to have a demon spellcaster change into the demon form, to increase your stats. And also for the coolness factor, since you don't really have a need for most armors as a spellcaster. On the other hand, they do have a downside, especially for spellcasters. When in any form that's not your main form, it also blocks access to your usable items tab. For example, here I have the Lucky Dice, Old Grimoire, the Jar Sigax, Dragon Familiar, and also an Extend Meta Magic Rod. Because they disappear from your usable items tab, you cannot use them at all, which does somewhat hamper spellcasting characters as they are reliant on Meta Magic Rods to either cast more spells or highly increase the damage of their spells. On the other hand, for abilities like Demon Rage, Cleave, Power Attack and so on, you can have that just fine when shapeshifted. Now let's talk about gear for our Demon Shapeshifter character. For the amulet, as usual, Valexis Magnifying Amulet. Because we are a Demon Slayer, you won't really need to use amulets that increase your natural attacks such as Mighty Fists, because we can simply cast either Magic Fang or Greater Magic Fang on ourselves for the demon forms that use natural attacks. Armor doesn't matter, because as I've said before, in shape-shifting forms you don't get your any armor bonuses, even armor effects. On the early game, however, when you still don't have access to any form, you can just use whatever, it also it's not going to matter because you will be attacking with a rich weapon for safety. Now for the belt you have a few different choices. I really like the belt of Mangling Frenzy for the end game because I do play with a Scald, and even if you don't have a Scald, this does have the effect of granting you an extra 4d6 slashing damage on every critical hit, which is huge, when you are under any Rage effect, including Demonic Rage. Because of all of the free attacks we have, and many of those will be critical hits, this is another way of increasing our damage by a lot. But there's also a very special belt for Shapeshifter characters, which is the Lizard Tail Belt. Whenever, well, if you are an Animal Companion or under any Polymorph effect, including Demon Form, you gain not only a plus 3 morale bonus to armor class, which is very rare, also to reflect saving throws, and a plus 8 circumstance bonus to armor class for the first round in every combat. Because most battles will be over at this point in the game in just one round or two rounds, this can help you a lot when it comes to tanking. As for the early game, just go with belts that increase your strength and constitution. For the glove slot, because we are a ranger, I really like the big game gloves, as it does further empower our query ability, by actually debuffing the enemy with minus 2 penalty to armor class and Seekan, both of which are very powerful. And eventually, as a ranger, we can even get Improved Query, which turns it into a free action, so we can easily spam it as many times as you want per round. But you can also use gloves like Fencer's Gifts depending on the form you have. For boots, the choice is simple as usual, Ronax Sacrifice, the best boots in the game overall as I've already shown you in my How to Get Them guide. 
As far as helmet, Shy Lady helmet, I also have a guide for this because it can be very missable. The plus 4 profane bonus to strength and plus 2 to armor class are invaluable. Goggles of piercing gaze for the plus 1 in sight on attack and damage against outsiders like all demons. Cloaks of resistance with the highest effect as usual. For rings, I really like Guiding Star for the bonus to initiative. And you even have crazy high initiative, 40 here, which is enough to almost always let you act first before the enemies can react. And the secondary effect, as we have high initiative, chances are we can easily proc it for higher damage. The other ring slot is up to you. We don't need rings of evasion because rangers already get evasion by default. For the mid game, you can use something like the Marty's Testament ring because it does give you immunity to mind affecting, which is huge, and even a plus 4 bonus on wheel saving throws. The vulnerability to fire penalty doesn't matter, we can just cast resist and protection from fire to overcome it. As for braces, well, the engraved lucky braces you get at the beginning of the game are always great, even at the end game. Now, as far as weapons, because we are a shapeshifter, as soon as we get our demon forms, weapons don't matter for us. For the early game, however, be sure to use glaives, and this is why I have Finian here with me. Glaives are reach weapons, so we can attack from very far away with them, and from the beginning of the game you have a lot of nice glaives, even as far as the first dungeon because they are the favorite weapon of Baphomet and all of his cultists. As far as your quick slots, some items here are important. Old Grimoire, which you get from the boss of the Ivory Sanctum area, can be great because rangers have very powerful spells, and we do gain extra spell slots of level 1, level 2 and level 3, which is exactly where our best spells are. The Dragon Familiar Jarsig Axe, of course, for more elemental damage on hit. The Lucky Dice, which you get by defeating Churusina at the Dresden Siege, because of the luck bonus. And lastly, extend metamagic rods. The reason is that we can actually extend our demonic form abilities. A normal extend rod is enough, so a lesser extend rod for extending demonic form 1 and 2. And then the normal extend rod works for the other ones, demonic form 3 and 4. You can easily buy the lesser extend rod in the early game, as far as the normal extend rod, you can get it by defeating Jerebeth or buying it from the Storyteller Tower during chapter 4. And you can actually miss that one, so be sure to get it if you need it. It's just to increase the duration of our form, so we don't have to recast it. Now, when it comes as to how to play this build, well, for the early game, before you have access to your demon abilities and the demonic forms, be sure to use a reach weapon like a glaive. Also, remember to enlarge your character, so you gain even more reach and can attack from even further away. Lead Blaze is something that you get very quick as a ranger, and you should always have this on, as it will work with all of your demon forms as well. Acid Maw is just something for your pets. The acid damage, well, it can help against some of the early enemies because at the early game and, and some of chapter 2 and 3, there's still a lot of human enemies that don't resist acid. Unbreakable Heart can help when it comes to removing confusion from party members, and Long Strider is great for the movement boost and the very high duration of hours per level. For second level spells, this is when you get Sense Vitals, and it's also another great buff that you should always basically be spamming before challenging encounters. Animal Aspect can be good as well for when you get Aspect of the Wolf, because Animal Aspect, even though it's just a self buff, it does grant you a plus 4 competence bonus to combat maneuver buff when choosing the Gorilla form. Instant Enemy is always a great choice against enemies that are not demon, because this will let you benefit from your full favorite enemy bonus against known demons. And Magic Fang greater of course to buff either your pet or your form's natural attacks. Besides that we also have Aspect of the Wolf, which can be great because it does give you an extra trip attack as a swift action per round, and this does have synergy with your new Aspect of Calavacus for even more attacks. Never mind of course the chances of tripping the enemy, which is great for forms that highly increase your strength. As for when you actually get the demon form, so as soon as Mythic Rank 4 during Chapter 3, well, you can always check my generic demon guide that I made explaining each of one of these forms and what makes them so good and their unique abilities as well. But overall the best are certainly Merrily and Baylor, but you only get them at the late game. For the early game, go with something like Sheer or Brimorak for the higher attacks and the Sheer's powerful charge, Kalavakus for powerful charge and horn attacks, Vrock for the infinite mirror image which is amazing for defenses, and of course Nafalshini for the very high boost to strength. Also, whenever you change into a new demon form, you can see here somewhat of a quick recap on what weapons the form actually has by default, but this can be increased through, you know, haste and other abilities and spells. First, let us see our Baylor form in action against this mythic Galu demon here. Turn Demonic Rage on, of course, 
and we have Aspect of Kalavakus for the cheese, Aspect of Shear for powerful charge, Incubus for more damage, and also Baylor to share the rage with our allies. Don't forget to use Query because eventually it becomes a free action, so you have unlimited uses of, of it per round. So now that we have both the Monic Rage and Query, we can truly charge. The classic slowdown because of how many attacks we get. And you know we have so many attacks that the game has trouble actually properly accounting for them all. Look at that. The cool thing about the Baylor is that we also get a whip attack, which is just treated as another natural attack really. And we did actually end up with 122 attack bonus without the d20 roll, so our final result was 141. That's even, I mean, even if you lose some of these buffs, it's still enough to easily hit anything, even on unfair, because we're still missing, let's say, Mark of Justice from Scylla. And here it is, plus 10 from Favorite Enemy. As a Demon Slayer Ranger, we gain this full bonus against all of the demons that we fight in the game. And this is with the penalty from Power Attack on. And just for comparison, on Baylor form we actually got 8 attacks total. So while it is the form with the highest ability score boosts, so you can have the biggest strength, dexterity and constitution, the Merlif form, as I'm about to show you, has way more attacks per round. And these are the stats while under Merlif form, there isn't that much of a difference really when compared to Baylor. And the best part is, all of the attacks that you gain are long sword attacks, and you do have a massive amount of them, because of all those extra arms. But she also deals a lot more damage, so we have a full power attack bonus here, plus 30, because all of her attacks are basically long sword attacks, so she is treated as if two-handing her long swords, as opposed to the Baylor who has to share the long sword attacks with the whip attacks, so he does have lower power attack bonus to damage. So let's charge against this poor Baylor here, on Merilith form. And that's it. So you know, on Merilith form, we actually have 13 whole attacks. That's 5 more attacks than in Baylor form, which can certainly add up. On Merilith, you just slice and dice while putting all those extra arms to good use. Let's kill this other Merilith here to show who is the best Merilith. Just keep on going. Even if you aren't charging, you still have a lot of attacks. Well, so this was it from my Demon Slayer Shapeshifter Demon Guide, everyone. I hope I've managed to show you how powerful and fun this build can truly be. If you've enjoyed this video, then please remember to like, subscribe, and even become a member of the channel for access to some exclusive perks. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends, and I'll soon be posting my other demon builds, so stay tuned for more.